Hey traders, Steve here from Jackrabbit Trader, and in this video we're going to take a look at the portfolio for Saturday, September 14th, 2019. So let's start with looking at the market, because the market's really performing pretty well. Uh, and then we're going to go into the portfolio, which is not performing very well, and I want to show you a couple things that I look at uh, when we go through these periods of underperformance. So first looking at market cycles. Uh, we've had a green market cycle on for a few weeks now, uh, really triggering here on the 29th, where we closed above the 21-day moving average, tested, and really since then have been actually trading above the 8-day. So we are pretty extended above the 8-day and above the 21-day. All right, so this is a time where I would like to see us go sideways, um, you know, from a moving average standpoint. If you look back. At previous times, you know, you get pretty extended and you move sideways, you get extended and you get a little bit of a pullback, right? And you continue to ride that eight day. So right now, market looks good from a market cycle standpoint. If we head on over to the SPY and look at it from a technical standpoint. Nope. What's going on? There we go. SPY. All right, we still on the weekly chart have this broadening pattern where the highs are getting higher, lows are getting lower, and we are trading you know, above this, this uh, trend line. So we're kind of pinching off here now in this triangle portion here where we have this resistance and we have support coming in. So from a weekly perspective, I'm not loving the uh, overall pattern right this to me looks like we eventually want to break below 282 and maybe make a a push down into this 270 area or, or something maybe even a little lower uh, i'm not going to say we go down to 220 but you know you never know and that would be i think uh, uh, a catastrophic event maybe that gets us down there so for right now obviously not predicting we're just looking at we're up against some resistance we're also pushing up a little higher with support. Just keep that in the back of your mind. With the daily chart, we are basically pressing against all-time highs, all right? And we tra we traded against them yesterday or at the 302, or I should say Thursday. And then Friday, here we are making a little bit of a pullback seller stepping in. Not surprising, right? I mean, let's be honest. This is a pretty quick run from the lows here at 284 we're all the way up at 301 now and you know if it was me we'd be taking profits right i mean it, it is what it is if you're trading short term money you, you have to take profit against this level all right and then see what happens do we pull back back to 294 and then break out do we stay up in the higher end of this range around 302 maybe above 300 consolidate break out do we roll over, come back down, test support? All right, all those are possibilities. All those are things that we need to be aware of. All right, so ultimately, for right now, the market is really acting very well. The market had a great week, all right, basically up almost every day, and it really, you know, destroyed our portfolio as far as uh, we didn't keep pace with the market whatsoever. And we're going to go through our positions, but I want to, before we do that, I want to show you one of the things, and we haven't really touched on this in the past, but it's something that I keep open. And you can see that over here on the left. Actually, let me detach it so you can see it a little bit better. Oh, I just deleted it. Hold on. Be right back. All right, we're back. So I want to look at this sector um, watch list here, and we're going to detach it this time and not delete it. We'll bring it in here so you can see a little bit better. But uh, ultimately what this is, and this isn't something that I look at necessarily every uh, week or uh, every you know couple weeks. Um, I really only look at this when the markets are starting to act differently than my portfolio. And that's what happened this week. So we, we added a lot of positions last week. I think we added four positions. Um, and we'll go over those, as I said, in a few minutes. But... We added positions that underperformed this week. And what I do here is these are the sectors. So these are the basically the nine uh, ETF, the spider ETFs that represent the SPY. And I also have the SPY in here. And the first column 
uh, over here that says percent change. This is the change for the week. And then the second one is the change for the month. So what I'm able to do is actually sort by percent change. And I can see which sectors now have outperformed the SPY, okay, and which ones have underperformed. And when we look at it, okay, so SPY is here. Sorry about clicking all over. Um, and, you know, what's outperformed this week? Well, it's the financials, the energy, the industrials, the materials, and the discretionary names, okay? And what's underperformed? Tech, all right, which we added a lot of last week. The XLV, which is healthcare. XLP, consumer staples. Think about what we added last week, right? We added some Mondelez, all right? That didn't work out. Tech's not working. ADP and Visa, not working. Um, and some are utility names, which we don't really have too many of. Um, but so we're, what happened last week is we added positions on, and then this week they completely underperformed. And now if we look at it over the past 30 days, it's a similar situation where, you know, things that were working is what we're getting into, right? So we were getting into uh, the the um, discretionary names, all right? Tech was right there it was up a percent versus the spy so tech had been underperforming a little bit but look what was you know xle over the last month was down 0.33 uh, percent but in the last week up 5.31 percent so this one really outperformed so what does that tell you that tells you that now there's some rotation happening right the stocks that were leading the market are now being sold and people are now taking that money and trying to put it into other names, the beaten up names, the names like XLE, the XLF, all right? The XLF was up 3.19, outperformed this week alone, up 5.91. So before this week, it was down, all right? And so you understand how that works? So even though we're up 5.91 this week, all right, that means that it was actually coming into this week down 2%, Okay. So over the last 30 days, it's now up 3%. So if it's down 2%, added 5% is now showing as up 3%. So I, I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments below. But realistically, there was a rotation, okay? And the rotation is now into money or into stocks that were beaten up out of stocks that were doing well. And we're going to go through the portfolio. And this week, uh, we see a lot of that. And even in our... Um, trade alerts i want to now look at putting on some some uh risk in the positions that we're not in like the financials like the energy names okay got to try and now balance the portfolio and try and get back to what is working now right and that's what where we got hit a little bit this week and again you know it's a good tool to have it's just as simple as i said it's just the simple sectors and sorted by out you know per, uh, percent change over the last seven and 30 days and it just gives you an idea of what what uh you know or how the market is reacting and again um you know going by the last 30 days you know you would think our portfolio should have done pretty well but this last week really uh really it was frustrating to say the least and it is what it is it's just the way the market works i'm not going to get upset about it um but we did underperform greatly this week and, you know, if we go into our uh, positions, you know, we didn't close anything out this week. It was a pretty quiet week. But everything that we put on last week, here are those four names. Info, Mondelez, uh, Realty Income, and uh, Visa. Uh, those were down over $1,000. All right. And that now takes us to a, a $1,300 loss in open profit. So September is not really uh, being too kind to us. We're halfway through, and this may be our first red month uh, of the year, and they happen, okay? And it doesn't mean that we're doing something wrong. It just means that, you know, we got to try to uh, adapt and, and understand that we're going to continue to follow the same process, all right? Uh, we know it works, and we need to make sure that we go ahead and and take care of it and just continue to move the way we were moving. So let's take a look at our positions and then we'll look at maybe adding some risk uh, through the weekly trade ideas that we have. And first one we're gonna look at is Adobe, okay? So Adobe, 
coming down. Uh, tested that 270 level. Remember, we want, we really like that it was holding over 283. Uh, that broke this week, testing the 270. Now we have to see what happens. Does it continue to break down and get us out next week? Or does it reverse off this strong support level and move higher? But again, looking at the XLF, I'm sorry, the XLK, all right, we're still holding in the, into these highs, but is one of those names that, uh, or one of those sectors that was underperforming this week. So got to just be a little wary of that. ADP, hopefully, you know, maybe you guys added, maybe you didn't. Um, but if you got into it last week or on Monday, uh, we're getting out of it today. It is what it is. It's it's a busted trade. Uh, to me, this is a what I look at as a false breakout. Had a breakout and immediately it was rejected. And not only that, um, you know, it, it blew right through the 162 level. It is holding this 158, but as I talk about in my e-course, uh, we can't second guess it, right? The, the closing stop was 162, and that's what we're going to hold ourselves to. So we're just going to sell the market here, uh, sell it across the board, and we're going to go all 15... Nothing's working. Oh, we're not going to sell it now. We'll come back to it. But I am selling uh, ADP. I'm not sure why the uh, keyboard doesn't want to input that. What else have we got? Uh, AME. All right, industrial. So this one bounced off the lows. Uh, holding that 81 and let's see now we're kind of coming up to these highs uh, and now what happens do we test these highs where are these highs at like the 92 level all right so we got a couple dollars until we get there and then ultimately break out do we come up go sideways do we get rejected all right a lot of different options but uh, nothing really to do in AME Comcast, one from uh, two weeks ago. Actually, I got to turn on my trades. Sorry about that. So Comcast, you remember, we bought this uh, uh, several weeks ago. Really hasn't done anything. We looked to add to it last week, but the way the, the poor, uh, position calculator worked out, it, we basically had what we needed and maybe a little bit more than we should have. Uh, but here we are we moved our stop to 42 and comcast breaking to new highs let's see how far that one can go costco all right similar situation remember costco is a staples play state we talked about the staples the xl uh the xlp okay so this week while the market was up 2.4 percent staples were down 0.94 percent this week so again significant underperformance from the staples you can see that here we bought on monday right around 292.57 and have quickly been rejected from that level but you know it is what it is who knows this can turn around and go higher we're still holding well above the 262 level that is our stop hilton all right hilton's interesting here and this is one that if you wanted to be super aggressive with uh, i think you have an opportunity to go ahead and potentially add to this and what i'm looking at is this remember we talked about and we've been talking about this very controlled pullback right it, it hasn't been these big candles but it's just been a very slow methodical pullback to the downside then it established this 9042 level as some support where we came down and touched came down and touched came down and touched Five weeks in a row, all right? Five weeks in a row, it came down, basically pinching between the support level and this downtrend line. And sure enough, this week, now here it is popping to the upside. So I think in this situation, you know, you could look to add to this position if you wanted. So you have about a $6 risk, um, you know, $6, you know, see how that, that calculates out. And, you know, the only concern I have, and you know, full disclosure here, hundred dollars, I you know, is going to be uh, probably some kind of resistance. Not only from a psychological standpoint, you know, 
they always talk about it, this hundred dollar i think it's bs but it is what it is i don't make the rules uh you know people selling at a hundred dollars so that's number one and number two it actually does line up pretty consistently with uh the, the previous high so this is one i think maybe next week pops a little higher um we currently have 73 shares uh, i'm holding about a seven thousand dollar position so uh, i may look to add to this one and uh, i'll i'll let you know in, in a few minutes info all right so this was one that we added last week it, you know for most of the week it was all the way down uh got a good bounce uh for the last two days or so and now it looks like it tested the resistance uh, that was and now became new support and let's see if we can continue moving higher mondelez complete failure um you know again similar to uh adp as soon as it broke out it pulled right back we're still above the level of 53 so you know we're still in the trade but who knows uh, this just isn't a good start I, I hate to see um it doesn't give me the most confidence when you have a nice clean breakout i mean it's a simple pattern very tight consolidation beautiful breakout and then boom failure immediately all right so uh this may not work out in our favor and of course it's probably one of our biggest positions realty income same thing you know you have this big consolidation breakout and now here we are right back into the consolidation so uh, this is on the other side of the coin maybe one of our smallest positions because the stop was so wide so we have some room for this to play all the way down to 67.50 pepsi all right really just moving sideways here came down tested support now let's see what it does uh stop down 127.84 Raytheon all right Raytheon is one that we've been talking about you know this is actually uh, a purchase from middle of July all right and then pulled right back similar situation right we had a nice uh, a nice breakout and then the following week pulled pulled back didn't really do much for the last five or six weeks and now starting to move higher so this is a new breakout you know again looking to uh, I probably wouldn't actually move my stop here. I mean, you could marginally move it maybe to the 176 area, but there's so much uh, price action here at the 173. I'd probably leave it where it is and maybe, um, you know, if you want to get into it, you know, do that. But uh, I don't think I'm going to be adding to this. I'm going to leave it at 198, keep my existing stop at 173 and see what happens. The 207 is obviously going to be the first support. And then we have the 228 if we can get there but raytheon one of our actual winners in the portfolio snps all right same thing got into this early last week uh, at the 140 level and this week a complete rejection back into consolidation taking out the lows from last week you know just not not a healthy looking pattern and who knows you know we again uh, that's the way they look right now. It's just you know frustrating when you have these nice setups, and that's why it is what it is, right? It's trading. It's not that we're, uh, you know, we're not here, you know, making money hand over fist. It is what it is. We can't control it, um, and it's just frustrating when you get these very nice clean setups, look great, and then fail. Especially when the market, you know, I think that's what frustrates me more than anything else is the market was uh, really strong this week, and we completely didn't, you know, get any participation. Same thing, Visa, as we said, uh, you know, pulling back, still holding over 172-ish. And, uh, you know, so that's it. So let's just look real quick and see if we want to add to, what was this, in Hilton. Let me, let me just double check something. All right, so let's go over real quick. We're going to jump in the position calculator. We're going to put Hilton in. I got my keyboard to work. That's a good thing. Hilton stop let's call it 90 bucks 81 shares 7803 81 shares what do we own hilton 59 let's add to it right what the hell there's uh you know you got to take your shots when you take them so let's let's add a little bit we'll do that right now uh 81 20 would be 79 so we're gonna add like 22 shares to the portfolio in hilton let's 
So we'll do that. Uh, we'll, we'll add to that position. All right, so let me mark that. Mark row so I know what we're doing. And this is usually what I do. I'll kind of go through. I know I know in the videos usually I'll I'll go ahead and actually uh, do it at the same time, but usually I just go through, mark the rows, and then I know what I have to come back and and test and not test, purchase or sell. So I'm going to sell my ADP. I'm going to add to my Hilton. I'm not touching Raytheon, and let's look at some new trades, right? Uh, so again, now in this situation, there's the opportunity to there's some market rotation, right? And if we look at the XLI this week, right, we, we have, uh, this was one of the outperformers, okay? Up 4.85 and also up 3.98 for the month. So up 4.85, you know, when now it's up four for the month, means that coming into this week, it was down. And you could see that from CSX. If you guys remember, uh, we sold out a UMP. Well. Uh -huh. Look at that. It's right back above support and looks great. All right. So I'm going to actually take and start a position in CSX on this pullback. And what I'm looking at here is the fact that we had this big pullback. Okay. And this came right down to a, a trend line. All right. And we consolidated and then started moving higher. So maybe I'm a little late on this on this move, uh, but I'd rather be a little late on a pullback than a breakout. All right. And um, right now we're going to look at it's the stop is 64. So I'm going to actually mark this cause I know I want to buy it. Go into this, we'll go into this and we're going to go into, so I'm just going to make some notes for me. So ADP by 81. Nope. So that's actually by. 22 Hilton and then we're going to go here and this is going to change to CSX and we're going to go to 64 bucks and we're going to say buy 62 CSX okay we'll put that order in as well we got ITW I'm going to pass on ITW here, all right, and for no other reason than um, with the purchase of CSX, let's see what we got, we're going to have four industrials, and that's probably as many as I really want to have, uh, I want to spread the risk out a little bit, so I'm going to skip on ITW, uh, it is a breakout, we have some resistance here at 170, Again at 179. Nothing wrong with the trade. It's just money's limited. Okay. And I'd want I definitely want to buy some of the financials and the energy names that we have here. JPM. All right, JP Morgan. They have earnings coming up. Uh, let's see. It looks like earnings are the 15th. So we got plenty of time before earnings. Uh, but this is one that I definitely want to buy. Stop's gonna be a little a little wide. All right, we're gonna go from 120 all the way down to 105. And we're just going to start a position here. So let's do the same thing. We'll go over to the position calculator, JPM. And, you know, we're doing this and, and I'm adding and I'm, and obviously we're putting risk on the table. Just understand that we are up against that, the all time highs. All right. So it's nothing that, I mean, we want to be aware of, but our process is green market cycle. We're adding to risk. We're not really evaluating the SPY based on, uh, and based on technicals, we're evaluating the market cycle. So we're above it. Want to go ahead and make sure we're adding some risk. So we're going to buy 35 JPM. OKE. So this is another. Now let's take a look at the. Wow. That's tough to buy on that energy name, isn't it? It's up 5.31%. Energy looks like it's in the doghouse. See, at least you got the industrials. The industrials are popping up. The financials are popping up. Even the materials are popping up. I can't buy that energy name. 
and you know, I hope you guys appreciate the uh, not to sound like an asshole, but I hope you guys appreciate the the fact that uh, you know I'm doing this on the fly, and these are things that I really look at. I mean, there is no like as much as we talk about there being a rule book. Uh, sometimes it's just how do you do it? How do you how do you hold your nose and buy? This is exactly against. If I looked at this, had no idea what it was, this I would never buy this. All right, whether it was Apple or Disney or whatever it is, this looks awful. Okay, there's no setup to it, and the more I look at this, to me, this is a short, uh, like a, like just a oversold, you know, uh, rally. All right, look at what you got. You got the i the, and again, this is the XLE, but you got a downtrend. You came right up into the bottom of the downtrend. This probably wants to roll over. And maybe even test these lows down here at the 55. I can't. I can't buy the energy. I'm gonna skip it. To me, it's not. It's not where I want. If if my money is finite, I don't want to be putting it in a sector that's been trending lower for most of the year. I would much rather put it in something that looks like it's starting to move higher. All right. Even like, let's look. I'm curious. Like, what's? I mean, yeah. Look at the XLP. I mean, that's. I feel more confident after you start looking at the at the sectors. And again, I don't really do it because I try not to. Um, I try not to to cloud my decision with any more information, right? I just want to look at the stock. But here, I mean, you know, these are all names. That, like, if we if we go through these, all right, let's just go through these. And here, it's impromptu, right? I mean, this was not discussed. We we weren't going to do this, but if we were realistically looking at XLF, is good. XLE looks like shit. XLI, good. XLB, better. XLY, great. SPY, not the best. I mean, good, but it scares me. Uh, XLK, moving higher. XLV looks like maybe a, a, one of those control pullbacks. You have this uh, pennant forming right here. And I haven't looked at these. I'm, I, this is just this is how I go through my analysis, and you know I like the XLV there. I like the XLY, or I'm sorry, XLP, XLU looks good. The only one I really don't like is the XLE. I'm not. We're not putting any uh, any uh, energy names on here. All right, then we got Raytheon popping up again. Not going to add to that. And this is a financial, so let's add a little more of the financials, right? I like the financials. STI. That's a huge move from 59 to 69. They have earnings this week. Earnings are the 1018. All right, so that's got a little bit of a move to the upside. Put a little STI. STI 59. Like a super small position. S by ST fifty five STI. All right, so that's what we're gonna do this week. We're gonna sell our ADP. We're gonna buy twenty two Hilton. We're gonna buy sixty two CSX. Buy thirty five JPM and buy fifty five STI. Uh, pretty sure we should have enough money to do all that. But regardless. I hope you guys enjoyed that look and I know it was a little lengthy and if you got to hear this point congrats you know make sure uh, you kind of absorb it if you have to watch it again um, I know sometimes I get a little bit uh, unorganized maybe <laughs> it would be the right word that's kind of my uh, my mo uh, I like to be organized but then I I run off on my tangents but you know again just just understand that you have to look at these names in a way that makes sense. And, you know, again, if we were outperforming the market and we had a great week, I probably would have never brought up the sectors, right? Because at that point, to me, it doesn't matter. We're in the right names. But this week, we went down, the markets went up. I want to know why. And part of the reason is, are the markets going up? Because now some of the names that are oversold are getting bought. Are the names that are overbought being sold we don't know all right but again using those sectors and using this little chart keeps us out of what i consider to be bad trades all right so this is we've talked about this in the past 
But, you know, you have to kind of do the analysis that, you know, the stock right here it is. It looks great. You zoom out. I don't even know. What does it look like? On, yeah. I mean, it looks great. It's one of the names that hasn't there's no issues with if you just looked at it. But it's part of the energy sector. And to me, the energy sector is not where I want to be putting my money right now. Uh, and it keeps us out of that trade. You know, and right, wrong, and different, I don't know. But you got to have a method to, to make sure you're always buying strength. And to me, this is not the strength. Uh, and, you know, who knows? Maybe it's a trade that would have turned out to be a big winner. And, you know, then it is what it is. But... Uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed that little look into um, my process. If you did, please hit that like button. And make sure to subscribe if it's first time here. Share it, leave a comment, do whatever you want to do with it. But uh, if you need anything else, let me know. If not, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.